Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. Six topics on the agenda in today's show, all discussed and critiqued by this group of engineering journalists. But there, that's in the script, that shouldn't be right. It's more plonk, a bunch of plonkers more like. <laughs> Uncle Albert, anyway. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, so on today's lineup, Mark's looking at small tools, and not just small, but really, really small tools. We touch on up and coming events with September and October being the busiest months on the calendar for open houses and exhibitions. So we are going to guide you as to where the best places are to be and what shouldn't be missed. We get an exclusive invite to, to Nursh Engineering, a company that just started six weeks ago and already up and running with three new customers and one new machine tool. So don't miss this if you're after a little bit of pre-Brexit inspiration. A very, very interesting story. Up fourth on the agenda is Colin, who's in Kent at Plasticom, and he's got his spark back this week. And then fifth, we head to Davramatic in Rugby, where they're hoping Stringy Swarf is a thing of the past. And to conclude this week's show, we visit Downhurst Engineering, quite the reverse to our normal technology features, because we go back to basics and find out why manual lathes can be such an integral part of the industry. We also touch on how they have advanced over over the years, even though they are rarely discussed. On with the show. So Joe's on holiday. So oh yes, he? He, he sent me a message actually. Oh, on, did on you Snapchat. get the same one I got then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great video. I haven't seen this. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. He's actually lost weight. <laughs> he's grown some hair as well. <laughs> or is that, is that a cap? That might oh. be a cap on his he's been, He has been... He's been working. Look at that one. Hey. Hey. I thought I found some shockwave. Oh my goodness, the abuse that you give to one another. Oh. Nice weather. Oh, come on. Yeah, lovely weather. He's He'll on laugh holiday. At that. Oh, of course he will, yeah. And Colin, of course, he's not with us today as well because it's his birthday. So what we want you to do is guess Colin's age. The closest and quickest guess on our YouTube channel will get a Swarf and Chips goodie bag. Any guesses, gents? Early 60s? It's got to be early 60s. I was thinking 70. Oh, is, 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 it, is, it, is, it, is it how old he is or how old he looks? What age do you which, wear a syrup? <laughs> oh, I think that's a bit harsh. I reckon about 56, oh 57. Yeah. Oh, possibly. Well, anyway, you keep your guesses coming in. But I want to know about your really small tool, Mark. It's not about the size, it's about how you use it. <laughs> <laughs> Something a little bit different today, guys. Two kerns. Now, you don't see too many of these machines in the UK. They're very high-end, ultra-precision machines. I'm here at Microsystems in Warrington. They work very high tolerances in reference to the medical sector. This is the largest tool that they actually use on these machines. However, on this microscope over here, you'll see an image of something a bit different. This is aimed at Lindsay. Now, Lindsay, this tool here is 0.04 of a micron. This is your human hair at 0.1. So, in theoretically, we can actually drill through your hair to make sure your extensions stay on your head. Uh, Mark, thank you very much. Au naturel. Au well, naturel. Well, Paul told me that it was, you know, obviously extensions. No, so. no. I meant her arm extensions. <laughs> House extension. How's extension. Yes. Anyway, about the small tool, talk to us. Well, um, microsystems, they work in the medical sector and if you wear contact lenses, the, the fine tool actually is the little abrasion at the back of the actual uh, contact lens that keeps it on your eye. That's how small that tool is to actually make uh, that, those type of products for the medical sector. Those Kern machines, to do that as well, they're very high speed. You're talking sort of 30, 42,000 RPM machines. Uh, and mm. fantastic surface finishes, which I assume you'd need mm. if, yeah. if it's full. And, and I, don't, I, I don't know of any other company that's see. got those sort of level of machines either in the UK. Well, I mean, Rainford Precision Machine Tools supply them, but they are dedicated to, to you know, high-end applications, the dental industry, the medical industry, mm. uh, and even the watchmaking industry yeah. for very, very small, intricate parts at very high speeds. Okay. So still to come, we go to Davramatic Talking Swarf. Colin's at Plasticom, and that was filmed before he turned 59, 70. We it's don't know. Sense. We don't know. So keep your guesses coming in. And don't forget that new startup business, Nurture Engineering, all coming up in the next 15 minutes. Now, gents, events, it's all happening right now, isn't it? 
Yeah, I mean, you, you've got uh, DMG Mori, TW Ward, you've got the TT, TCT show coming up Seco as well. TCT coming up soon. Yeah, yeah. Star Citizen. It, th this is the time of the year that the majority of events happen. And it's not mm. just the, the kind of domestic events. You've also got the A and B show, which we'll be at uh, in Germany. You've got IMTS. So this really is the time of year where if you're exploring the market, you're looking at you're looking for a new machine or a product, you know, looking at new technologies that, you know, the, these are the events that are going to happen. But you can see them all on the MTD channel. Yeah, we're going to be at each and one of those. So. That's what I was going to say, yeah. actually. Are we going to be there? We'll be covering, covering them all. We'll be filming at all the events. And if you go to the mtdcnc.com website, you'll be able to look on the events channel to see exactly when they are. And yet we'll all be there. Exciting yeah, times for the industry. Mm. So if you've ever felt the need for a little inspiration, watch this. Conrad Nurch is just 32 and he set up his own company. So Gio and Paul went to visit. Today MTD have travelled to the outskirts of Bristol to visit MPE Engineering. Now this is a fabulous story, a fabulous success story. You've recently opened this new company and you've actually just delivered your first parts this week. Yes, we've managed to work really hard last week to deliver the parts on a Monday. Very young, very urgent parts, yes. And you've just purchased your first machine? Yes, the Leadwell um, V30i. Very good machine, small one, but very powerful and dynamic. And what were the reasons for you to start your own company? It's just making sure I can do what I can do best, which is doing the engineering work and making sure that there's no one above me telling me not to do and not to try something else. And you put in many hours in at the minute? Quite a few, yeah. Like, you know, 60, 70, 80 a week. Oh, blimey. Do you ever see him? Uh, yes. If I come here, I can see him. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Not so, at home, though. <laughs> so, are you two at the minute, is it just the two of you that are working here? It's two of us, yes. And, well, my parents now as well, doing the decoration work, but yeah. And you've been in the industry for some time now, so what are your aspirations moving forward? This is your first machine, and where do you see yourselves in five years' time? What I would like to have is, in um, the next six months, let's say, I would like to have a lathe and then I would like to move to um, five axis and automation because I want to have the base of engineering like turning and, and milling in one place and then going forward with five axis and automation. And you've got that experience from your background? Definitely, definitely. It's, it's all nice and nice and nice area. And so. what, what kind of work would you be looking to get into? Um, it's anything. It's from any, any alien job like prototypes, MPIs work, you know, one-offs, two-offs, production work, you know, as long as it can fit my machine and I can deliver it, it's perfect. Well, it sounds fantastic and we wish you all the very best for the future. And here's Paul with some donuts. What are you doing with donuts, Paul? Would you like a donut? <laughs> the, these guys actually, uh, when we got here, these donuts were, they thought Joe was coming. <laughs> <laughs> so they won't get eaten because me and Gio don't eat them. So uh, I know Joe's on holiday, but when he gets back, maybe we can take these back for him. It's lucky he's not here. Good luck. Great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that shot at the end where you see through the yeah. box of donuts. And you see. are brutal. That could be the thumbnail. Brutal. We'll all be on holiday in a couple of weeks, so I'm even get us back. But in all seriousness, this is a, a, a brilliant story, isn't it? Mm. I mean, you know, uh, six weeks ago, this company wasn't trading. Uh, and the, the thing that stood out to me that wasn't mentioned in this, and the full video is actually on mtdcnc.com, is about the fact that they managed to finance that machine by only paying a 10% deposit. They had mm. no trading history, um, and lead machine tools sorted everything. Well, as I say, startups like this, you need help, don't you? And obviously, that's that's what's helped them get, you know move on with this machine. Why, why, why the lead well? I think that um, he's had really good support. Um, Brendan Parrott has, has come in and, and um, kind of sold him the machine, really, in the concept, but also f for the rigidity of the machine, the quality, the value for mm. money. There's, there's lots of good reasons why he's purchased it. And a nice uh, working envelope for that, mm. a small footprint footprint free mm. access And machine. I think he's looking going forward, if he wants to buy more machines, he wants to stick to one brand. Yeah. Mm. And he knows we led well you know, turning, milling, five axis, mm. he can, he can mm. set. So he's got lots of aspirations for fifth axis machining or mm. automation. So and I think he's going to get to where he wants to get fast. Oh, I mm. think he will. And also, I know it sounds a little bit silly, but from another perspective, look how clean that workshop is. Anyone who wants business there, it's clean, it's smart. A lot of the time, if you're starting off, you do have to compromise in the location, mm. but he's not, he's not at all. And he's working 60 to 70 hours a week in that business and 60 hours a week for, as a contract um, machinist at another company. 
That's is there the that many hours in a week? You only do half of that. Well, yeah. uh, less than that. <laughs> that's, that's a good week. Yeah. So have you got a success story? Maybe you recently set up your own company. Please do tell us about it. And maybe, but maybe, you can come on the show. Uh, don't forget to comment on YouTube or even visit us at MTD C and C. And you can, like I say, be on Swarf and Chips. So next up, Plasticom. It was Colin who went there, isn't it? Correct. Guys, Swarf and Chips special. I need a plastic component to be manufactured. Look at that. This is my brainwave. I won't tell you what it is. It's top secret, but it needs to be manufactured in plastic. So what do I think? Plasticom Ashford Kent. So I've given them this design. You can see micron tolerance is there, absolutely. But from this, they can make a design on their software. So made nice and simple. So once they've made that design, come on, Chris, keep up, mate. And we're doing action shots here with the GoPro as well. So this is going to be a goodie. <laughs> Sorry, thank you, Chris, thank you. Over. So, as you can see, when I say testing, come on, Chris, keep up, man. If I think this is going to be really, really successful. Right, keep walking. So, they've done the design, it gets a bit dark, they come up with some tooling. It depends how many parts are what manufactured. Right, if I want one offs, two offs, they'll do SLA or 3D printing of it. If they think it's going to be a big production run, maybe up to 20,000. They'll do prototype tooling. So that'll be, yeah, like I said, 20,000. But they'll do it, manufacture the tooling in their own machine shop here. If I think this is going to be really, really successful, I'm going to need hundreds, if not millions of parts. So they'll manufacture tooling here. This is an example of something they've done. Come on, Chris, keep up. Great example, all done in-house. So they've milled it, they've turned it, and their latest investment is Sodic AD35L Spark Eroder Machine. Absolutely love it, fast. Linear motors, I have to mention that. So, and we're still on the GoPro here. So I've got my tooling. Where do we go next? Well, we go and find the right machine. Sorry, Sonia, so just out of the way, Sonia, we're busy filming. <laughs> it's only the owner of the company. Anyway, so, see, Bit more machine shop here, left and right. Careful, Chris, don't trip over. Some old well, some electrodes there they use for the machining. Here's one of the machines here. As you see, this one's called Maxima. They've all got their own name, so nice and personal. You've got some storage here of some of their tooling. They've got loads and loads of it, all really intricate pieces. Now, here's the machines. Now, this is a process. So, as you can see, starts off with some plastic. You see in there, Chris? That's your plastic granules. Basically, any type of plastic could be manufactured. The only one that is, they can't do is PVC, but this is definitely not PVC. Now, run through here into the hopper, heats up 220 degrees, I'm reliably told. Then into my mold tool just there, which they've manufactured for me. Through that, it then cools down with water along the conveyor, out we go. Collected there, nice and simple. Then they'll package it. They will test it. In fact, when I say testing, come on, Chris, keep up, mate. This is a great example of the accuracy these things can go to. So we're talking any colour. We're talking overlaying, was it, Chris, that I talked about earlier, which is where you've got two types of plastic together and different colours. But this component here, as you can see, is used for testing DNA. Now, I don't know exactly what they're doing with it, but really thin walls. And I'll just grab one off the conveyor. Well, as he juggles microphone and everything else, you see there, now, being a constant professional, I counted how many there are, 1,536 individual little wells there, thickness, wall thickness of a hair, so really, really tight tolerances, anything like that, it's brilliant. So my invention will be coming to you guys soon, all with the help of Plasticom, so I won't be working with you for chips guys soon. He's so funny. I, I caught up with Colin actually about this video and, and he was saying that um, they can actually take uh, a product from a drawing and actually manufacture uh, rather than use CAD CAM. Almost a fag packet, back of a fag well, packet. Well, yeah, that's what you're trying to do. And also yeah. that, that, that press, it's uh, 23 tonnes to 520 tonnes, which is um, around about the half uh, weight of a jumbo jet. Really? Yeah, so quite incredible. It's an industry we don't touch on, is it? Uh, that Enough. much yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. injection moulding. And yeah. it's a big part. I mean, a lot of the mould makers, we deal with them, some, and it's such mm. intricate work. A lot of fifth axis machines, mm. you know, are used to make special moulds mm. for the injection moulding industry. They're quite it's happy to take on one offs or do millions, you know, they're, they're, they're the sort of company that mm. they're quite happy to take that type of. Um, I mean, I'm volume. more familiar with the tool making side than the, the plastics yeah. side. Um, but it is good to see, and, uh, and I like the way he's gone through this. You, you can learn by watching the video. 
Albeit when I watched it, I did actually go up a couple of years in his age, the way he was puffing, so I'd go 64. He, he's certainly, yeah, he's 72 maybe. Yeah. Yeah. What toupee did he have on in that video, Mark? <laughs> 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 oh, okay. I wouldn't know. <laughs> wouldn't know. Mm. Okay, so two to go uh, to conclude the show. We go down to Downhurst Engineering, talking manual machines versus CNC. But before that, it's time for a stringy swarf story. MTD have travelled to Davromatic Precision Limited today to meet with Martin, the MD. Now, hi, Martin. Hello there. Now, I want to investigate new technologies, the HFT, for example. Now, how is this going to benefit your processes and company? Well, the high-frequency turning should help us uh, break up the score so that the uh, components will uh, run more reliably and we can uh, make more parts at the end of the day. Now, looking at this swarf, for example, surely you would have to stop the machine when you're producing swarf like this. Yeah, the swarf gets wrapped around the components, uh, around the tools, and then either the oil doesn't get to the tool, or the stud spindle crushes the, uh, the swarf onto the component and damages the component. So when, you, when you're producing swarf like this, you can't run lights out? No, not at all, no. We normally run those uh, five at a time, or some, sometimes one at a time, just to clear the swarf. So, with this new technology, will this now enable you to run lights out? It should do, yeah, on certain components. It's difficult to machine stainlesses and uh, titaniums. It's going to be very difficult to say lights out, but it'll definitely give us uh, better, better productivity by the end of the day. High frequency turning on, on the star here. For those engineers that don't know what it actually does, what does it do? But basically, Mark, it's just breaking down the, the bird's nesting, the breaking down the chip so you don't get long, stringy swarf. And, and I mean, I, only, I was only made aware of this, you know, probably about a year ago, you know, me personally. Yeah. But just last week, you know, I went to two companies where they were using this high frequency turning. And ultimately, you know, they're, they're already a star user, but on their um, existing stars, they didn't have this technology on them and, and they couldn't run their machines overnight or unmanned, you know, they couldn't. Because you get um, the bird, bird nest. Because of the bird yeah, nesting, yeah, you have yeah. to stop the yeah. machine, take out the swarf, then start it again. With this, ultimately, you know, you imagine being able to run your, your machine confidently, mm. lights out, mm. you know, unmanned, you know, it's going to make you a lot more money. And I think the important thing to stress here is this, this gentleman is, this is machine is, is just been installed literally yeah. a week ago and so is the HFT software so this is his first uh, venture into it and it's going to make a massive difference as he said in the video yeah. but the, the swarf you see there that's in the it's not, it's not because it's not actually in operation yeah. at the moment but no, when it is he's going to see a massive difference as to what other engineers have. So, so a star selling a, most of their machines with this technology on? It, yeah, it's, it's an option yeah. but the, 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 the thing to mention as well is it can be retrofitted to older machines yeah. too so yeah. This, this gentleman, and he is a gentleman, I've called him that twice now, but um, in Martin. his machine shop, he's got seven sliding head lathes from Stars, and, and a few of them are sort of eight to 10 years old. Mm. They can still be, I believe, retrofitted with the HFT mm. software. So it's a solution throughout. You can see uh, and talk to Star um, at their open house in October. I think it's the second, third, and fourth. Mm. Uh, certainly the first week of October, the Star open house mm. happens. Learn more about the machines and HFT. Okay, so to everybody out there, please tell us your experience with Stringy Swarf. Is it a big problem? Have you tried HFT? And as we always say, comment in the comments box below. So last up, when was the last time you bought a manual lathe or a mill? Well, we visited Downhurst Engineering and these guys see manual machines as an instrumental part of the business for both young and old. Today NTD have travelled to Downhurst Engineering. Now we're going to discuss the importance of still having manual machinery for educational purposes but also for industry. Now Rob you have the latest CNC technology but you also still have numerous manual machines. Now in your opinion let's firstly start with the industry. Why do you still have this, these machines in your facility? Oh, simply because obviously a CNC, you've got to set it up, make a programme, work holding, I can just come up, open the chuck, put the material in, off we go. Whether it's like it's just one diameter turn in, job done. But with a CNC, you've just got to put the program in, set your tooling up, and it's a little bit more time consuming. So would you say that they still lend themselves to low volume work? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. You, you, you can do one, one off, two offs. I mean, depending on your tooling again, you can do up to 10, 20 as many as you like, but obviously cost effective then, you've got to start looking at CNC. 
Now, I've seen some advancements in the technology of the manual machinery since I was an apprentice working on the Colchester. Can you go through a few of these new technologies, please, Rob? Well, probably when me and you were at, uh, doing our apprenticeship, Gia, we was uh, changing gear manually, whether it's high range, uh, low range, and then you would have colour color coding where you used to get the colours to match to give you the speed. Nowadays, you've just got three ranges, low, medium, high, and the potentiometer, which uh, takes over electronically and you go from well, 125 is the lowest up to 2,500 RPM in a matter of minutes. And also you mentioned Second about minute. vibration, about that feature. Yeah. Now, can you explain how right. you, you use that? Yeah, well, so, okay, if you've got a long bar sticking out the chuck, one meter, say, and by the time you get to the middle, you, the, the bar starting to flip, you may want to slow it down so you can get rid of that chatter or you know, sometimes you may be able to speed it up. But with the old style machines, you'd have had to stop the machine and then change the gear, start the machine back up, in which case then you've got a mark in your job. You may have took the edge off the tip, who knows? So, so it's that facility, it's not something I use every day uh, you know, because obviously the, the better you can get the, the job to hold, you've got steadies, etc., the, the better, the easier the machine. So it is, it, is, it is good to have that potentiometer rather than slowing it down by uh, manual gear change. I can see the, the importance of that. Now, you've also got another nice feature on your digital readout. What's that, Rob? Well, I, I guess this has been took from the CNCs where it's called constant service speed, CSS. So uh, basically, the bigger diameter, the slower it is, and then it gets to the middle of the job, it starts uh, speeding up, which it, it, it's very useful. Again, it stops you from changing gear. Uh, it's all there, uh, just a setting. And just to round up now, you know, before your apprentices move on to the, 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 the CNCs, you know, how important is it for them to learn on the oh, lathe? Yeah. Yeah, you, it's, it's really important. You've got to get them to familiarise themselves with manual machines and, and, and basically what, what tool, tooling can do, what, what the machine's capable of, what the tools are capable of, and speeds and feeds for that, that purpose. And then they can take that knowledge and then put that in CNC. It's, I think it's a, a major importance for, for any kid, really, to, for any student. Colchester machine tools, I mean, I see a lot of the, uh, the ladies actually in some of the colleges and the schools and the academies these days. I mean, did you guys actually start your apprenticeships on these type of ladies? Yeah, I did. I yeah, me too, me too. I used to have the old bit of emery, tape, uh, emery paper polishing them up fag hanging out of the mouth uh, <laughs> leave the chuck key in there and it'd fly across the top in fact one time i made a part i was terrible on a machine that's why i ended up doing what we do these days <laughs> but i remember making a part and the the uh, instructor went to put the plug gauge in it uh or was he measuring the od i can't remember he was measuring the od and he said jonesy that that fit is like a cock in a shirt sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's changed from it, is it? No, no. Well, that was you, not the machine, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think they've got their place in the industry, certainly. And I think that it really helps Downhurst Engineering Gout for the work that they do. When they're doing the low volume work for the oil and gas industry, mm. You know, it, it, it's it's an integral part of his business. You know, he's got the most up-to-date CNC technology, but Rob absolutely um, raves about these machines. What, he just what, what sort of tolerances could you get down to on these? It can still go down to, you know, point, you know, a couple of thou, I'd mm. say comfortably. And, you know, and now, you know it's, it's about quick setting. It's about yeah. turning jobs yeah. around quickly. It's about the phone ringing. I need a, a part, doesn't matter what material it is, mm. this sort of machine will handle it. They have made advancements in the technology, as Gio spoke mm. about with Rob, and the shirt sleeves that I was talking about are small shirt sleeves. If, if you were to <laughs> teach Colin how to use this, how long would it take you to teach him? Well, this is eyesight because he's 80, isn't he? Another so. 68 yeah, years. How about the syrup getting yeah. caught in the spiel? <laughs> <laughs> So that's it, guys. Don't forget to guess Colin's age for that chance to win a Swarf and Chips goodie bag. Feel free to contact us or comment on any of today's topics via our mtdcnc.com website or below on our YouTube channel. Swarf and Chips is attracting thousands of engineers every single week, so please don't be afraid to get involved and get yourself a mention. 
Now, next week we talk Fanuc training as Paul visits their HQ in Anstey Park. Bernard Holmes Engineering tell us about their two decades of investment in CNC. Mark's at Trident Engineering as well as Germany. And Paul has a cracking cycle time challenge for you on a rather long shaft. So join us same time next week and don't forget to keep those spindles turning. Bye.